Hello there, internet. Mogwai here, and I got another Legends of Rune Terror video for you guys today. And today we are finally going to reach Master's rank. About goddamn time. I know I've been <laughs> like stuck in diving for I don't know forever at this point, but the reality is I haven't really been playing much of Legends of Rune Terror outside of my recording sessions. Really, uh, even though so I do play sometimes at night to try to come up with new decks as I usually do, but I have been playing less because I'm working on this project that I mentioned prior. I don't want to keep mentioning this because it's still there's still so much that I have to do, and I don't want to be a tease about it in that sense. But I, I do want to give you guys, like I said, an explanation, right, as to why this season has been the way that it has. And for those of you who are wondering if my attention and my dedication towards this channel is going to decline, my answer is no. Like I will be posting videos and uh, I will continue to do what I do and I will amp up the uh, the quantity really soon as well I won't promise daily uploads uh, like I said but uh, I do definitely want to get my deck builder mojo going back at it and one of the key things to do that is to get master's rank so I don't have to worry about it and just get it done with so I can experiment and play all sorts of different stuff right and that is what we're gonna be doing today what deck am I taking to masters well the same one we showcased last time. Yes, back to back the same deck on a video. I know I rarely ever do this, but I wanna make sure that I play the deck that I feel most comfortable with uh, to get to Masters. And from that point onwards, I can get back to trying new stuff again, right? This is not a deck that I need to experiment with though. This is a deck that I know is really, really strong. Uh, this is my version of Twisted Fate Swain, and it has been doing wonders for me in Ranked, as today I'm going to showcase my climb towards Masters Rank, the latter portion of the Diamond Climb Rank, basically. And uh, it was, like I said, with this bad boy right here. I have gone over the deck tech in the prior video, so if you do want to uh, look into that, a uh, proper like explanation as to why I have the card distributions that I have and all that stuff, you can check out my other video. You know, it is called, uh, it has Krusty Codger in the thumbnail. And uh, I forgot what the title was. Swain likes it rough, and I remember. <laughs> and yeah, I'm 12, okay? Uh, and yeah, that's basically all I have to say. Today's deck tech will be shorter than usual. Let's just hop on to the games directly. And let's see if we can get that rank. And try out all sorts of new stuff from that point onwards. I got some really neat ideas that I'm excited to share with you guys. And that's basically it. Love ya. Have a sold day. Subscribe. Bell. Everything. I never mentioned the bell. Apparently it's very important. <laughs> I've been missing out. And uh, yeah. That's all I gotta say. Have a sold day. Enjoy the games. And I'll see you around. Alright. Let's get that Masters rank. Or die trying. Better late than never. Am I right? Hmm. I'm actually thinking of keeping Swain in my opener. And the reasoning behind this is because... I don't think this deck deals well with Swain. The, they could have Vengeance and stuff like that. It's pretty much a Legion's target though, with a bit of Splash of, for Shadow Owls. So, I am going to drop Zap Strafe in, and I am going to keep... Um, one Ravenous Luck. Bam, bam, bam. Ravenous Flock is generally good to keep, like, normally I would not mulligan away even one copy of it. But I'm also searching for my curve, right? Like, you know, Krusty Codger into Croaker, that would be really nice. It sucks that I don't have an answer for Zoe. Like, generally speaking, this should not really be a problem for our deck. I'm gonna go for the Paralyzing Bite with my Arachnoid Sentry. Unyielding light. And uh, I'm gonna Ravenous Flock here. We get one third of the way for Swain's level up. We have a blocker here for Swain though, so we gotta keep that in mind. Can't really attack here. Okay, well that's a good draw. <laughs> Before a pill cascade. Nope. Easy. Easy peasy. Gotta go with the flow. Gotta go with the flow. 
let's run into an auction firm over there as next turn we will be aiming to develop our will we be playing uh swain i mean they can drop a bazillion things that can deal with it right Stuss force an answer though Master, your i'm gonna play swain it forces them to develop something like the solaris arm forger yeah I could attack him here, but he could have a hush. And uh, I really don't want to deal with that. As we do draw into Twisted Fate, this is going to be a very, very crucial moment of the game. I'm going to go ahead and. Um, we live here. I'm going to block. And I'm gonna drop the Dreadweight Deckhand. I could try to focus on a Twisted Fate level up. But I gotta keep in mind that Ruination is a thing. No, no more ruination. No more ruination. What could they have? They could have something like hush or something like that. Deal me in. Perfect! Empire above all. That's why I wanted to lead off with this of fate, because I wanted to bait the, the vile feast. I wasn't sure they would be playing it because it's an allegiance deck. For Noxus! No no mana for hush. This is the attack of a lifetime, baby. Beautiful! So we also work for the level up. Normally you, you wouldn't want it to play like this fate first and then the fortune croaker, but we let off with the fortune croaker there to bait out their their play so that they would go under ruination. If they do develop ruination now, I mean You got legs, use them. No need whatsoever to develop anything like I know ruination is a possibility so the plan is very simple uh, if they do ruination we will go for a salvage as we will develop our crusty codger and whatever other unit we pick up as well oh I have nine mana which means I can't do that and that So double withering whale, so it's not allegiance then. Okay, there, there's that. I will break them. Da -da -da -da. Well, there's another one. He's running out of gas, we just keep coming. And he leaves himself wide open. Without my attention. Attack. 
We're gonna play the Ravenous Flock, shuffle a Swain back into our deck as we do take away the Spell Shield, and now we go for the Scorched Earth. Something's wrong. We're gonna attack with the Leviathan. They could have a Hush. We don't mind. They have health gain. All right. We have this Rachnoi Sentry in case our opponent were to develop something like a a, a Great Beyond. Even though we would have to, uh, yeah, that would be tricky actually. Prepare the cargo. There is no excess when victory is at stake. And because we played the Ravenous Flock that contained Swain earlier, as we drew to his Leviathan, we good. Noxus! Search little lives. <laughs> this this mind splitter is having a taste of his own medicine. Get stunned, bitch! All right, there's that. Go for an action fervor, force any other like potential health gain that they have. If they manage to survive, we'd rip tide rex them for the kill. And we knock him out. Praise the Noctora. Remember this day. I will member, Senpai. I will forever member. That was a nice game one. Let's go for another one. Alright. We're facing some. Smorky Draven Jinx. As honestly, I want to keep this entire hand. Like, double Ravenous Flock in this matchup can go a long way. Even though it's not super useful initially. Like, we do have to enable it with a Make It Rain in hand. <laughs> Baby, a trivel. Alright, so the idea is to get some massive value out of uh, Dreadweed Deccan here. Obviously, we gotta be wary to like turn one Zanite Yurkin or, or even that. But that that's a Poro Cannon that discarded a, a Rummage. That's fine. That's completely fine, especially if they make the mistake of just developing. That's fine. I've I'm gonna line them up. He knows the threat of... The people are my I was gonna say he knows the threat of... Uh, of Twist of Fate, but I guess, you know, that just doesn't exist in his world. That's a big level up progression for, for Swain here. You got legs, use them. We're gonna wrap this block. And now we play swing. Their time has come. 
He's out of gas. Whoo! We're in a gold card here. I'm not gonna wipe him. <laughs> I'm not gonna red card just because I want to swain wipe him. That bad. <laughs> Always for taking out the filthy aggro players, cleansing the ladder of them. All right, two more to go. And now we meet the, the Barrett. And now we meet. We meet. I don't know why I say we met. And now we meet the big brother. Took me forever to say that. <laughs> Just because I can't I can't English. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and drop everything that's not I'm gonna keep one arachnoid sentry and I'm gonna get away everything else. Um, double Leviathan is not really where we wanna be at, and certainly not triple. My god, this hand. Yeah, there's there's just not much we got going on for us here. I can't drop the salvage and leave myself wide open. Um, I have to. Yeah. I have to pass so fast. Believe it or not, the, the the speed at which I pass right there actually could have made a difference because I passed so fast that I really made my opponent think that I just have nothing. Right. I have to be certain with that pass. So that I can now do this. My beautiful face. I have the best job. I'm gonna go ahead and block here with uh, Arachnus and Freon through that. Does not feel great. But uh, we gotta we gotta work to try to retake this board. But we've taken a lot of damage, man. Like the having so many like we also drew into our Riptide Rex. Like we have a one off of this. We have to proactively uh red card here. Just so that we not only deal with the Spiderling, but we also set up that that Draven to go down to a Ravenous Flock. We bluff. We get some damage in. If he block with that, at least he gives me another target for Ravenous Flock. Um... I mean, if we make it to turn 8 and we start dropping Leviathan, sure, but the problem is I'm never going to be playing 3 Leviathans, and, uh, and especially with Riptide Rex, like, I just... The game is just not going to be that long, unfortunately. Oh. At least we clear that. Okay. Well, that's that's kind of a problem. That's a value engine, and I have no answer for it. I have nothing. I actually have nothing here. <laughs> this feels so bad, man. Oh. I cry every time. Well, so, some games, the RNG gods just say no. Yeah, unfortunately, us humans are powerless to them, so gotta move on to the next one. I I, I got distracted. I was like really tired. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can get some Draven Ezreal redemption. If we can actually draw like normal people this time around. We don't really need Scorched Earth here. Uh, Make it rain is also. It's decent, but it's not necessary. I'm gonna go ahead and mulligan everything that's not the Arachnoid Sentry, because I do wanna... Maybe I should've mulliganed so much, man, but I, I am searching for a specific card, right? But I don't I don't know what it is uh, about my luck today that I'm... Like, two... I have... I, I know I have four A-drops, but do I have to draw again? Two of them? Cool story, bro. Fascinating. 
gonna play Crusty Hunter. He could be uh, playing Ravenous Flock, but if he wants to spend it on this, that's completely fine. Yeah, this hand is kind of ass. Uh, I would like to just play Arachnoid Sentry, to be honest. Uh, I don't have Ravenous Flock, but I can push for some damage here. I'm gonna play Zap even if it is defensively. We get card advantage there, which is nice. Can you improve perfection? A ticket to the gun show! We'll definitely be uh oh. I am surprised by that. Uh this is kind of Kind of insane. I am very surprised by that play. I Yeah, there's so many there's so many instances in which that's that goes wrong. I, I can't really stand behind that. So I want to get four damage in on him, while also weakening his ballistic bot. We're getting close to uh, to Leviathan turns. Oh, to a level up here. I want to develop the uh, the Dreadweight Deckhand now. Let's play some mind games. Like, all the damage he's gotten on me is, is through Ignitions. <laughs> Ballistic Bot has actually put in quite a bit of work. Both of them. I mean, we do... I mean, like, since we haven't drawn a billion copies of Leviathan, it's actually good to have in hand right now. Like, it's not bad to draw these. Even in your opener, it's not terrible. The problem is if you draw a bazillion of them, right? Well, Ravenous Flock is a little bit useless here. Uh, we're gonna go with... We're gonna go with this. Alright, he does find the rummage, which allows him to really build up his card advantage again. Not great. It's okay. I could wait for him to tap out so that I can actually play my Leviathan. But the longer the match goes, the more he's he's gonna draw into answers. Alright. Well, I mean, you have to play some Mushroom Clouds, right? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, you have to play at least one, right? Oh, that's a harvest right there. The reason why I didn't resort to my Ravenous Flock onto this is because I can get extra damage on my opponent with the Cannon Barrages, but it seems like only one of, of them went towards that, so that works out pretty well for me. It's actually like a pretty, uh, a pretty balanced distribution of Cannon Barrages here. <laughs> but I, I really, I, I like this play, because right now, there's several things that he has to worry about. If he wants to deal with Leviathan, like, the way to do that is to deal some damage to it, and, uh, follow it up with something like uh, uh, Noxian Guillotine or you know, Scorched Earth, 
same same thing, right? That's yeah, that's just not that's not where you wanna be at. I'm worried about tribe even probably later though. I am worried about a tribe even probably later. But that's like perfection. That is actually perfection. Look at that baby. You better have an answer. Because I'm coming for you. That's beautiful. It's nice when you get it like an actual game. <laughs> Leave a like for actual games on the internet. I think we can all agree on that. Actual games are good. I do feel like my opponent made some some slip ups though. Like that 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 tribe even probably later to deal with the keg. That was that was a very desperate move, and I think you just gotta, you know, like the thing about powder kegs. The, the reason why I love Dreadway that can is because of the mind games, man. Having a powder keg on the opposing side of the board makes you really tentative, and you're constantly worried about cards like Make It Rain or Twisted Fate just going turbo on you, right? Getting insane value. Yeah. You ain't got nothing, buddy. Delivery barrage! How about we take him home, Rex? Get some sweet, sweet vengeance! My favorite. Oh, no. Uh, it could be a Rex, you know, just saying. Damn below it! All right, back to 60. Two wins away. Let's go for it. We are facing the bestest. The bestest of them all. And he's playing Fizz, Twisted Fate with Piltover though. Like I, I, I wonder what we're facing exactly. At least we don't have to worry about Ravenous Flock. Hello. We're gonna drop the Riptide Rex naturally, we're gonna keep these two, and I think I'm gonna keep the Zap Sprayfin as well. Zap Sprayfin's chill, she's cool. I like her. I like seeing Fate there as well. Fate, one of the natural counters to Fizz. Where do you stand on cold shots? Turn one pool shark? Is your entire deck like one and two mana? I very rarely see a turn one full shark. That just seems kind of ridiculous to me. Something the matter. Well, we eat up that pull shark and see what you got. <laughs> he actually drew a fist. You you gotta. All right. I'm gonna drop dreadweed. I can. You could just use Fizz to attack the Powder Keg, and that's fine. That's fine by me. I'm just trying to set up a body so that I can chain my Fortune Croaker onto it. I'm obviously not going to resort to my spells. I could have waited and set this up for an incoming Twist of Fate. But I'd rather just nullify his attack here. Play Fortune Croaker and just continue to send my deck. Ballistic bot. I just I still think that was so reckless though. That turn was so was really reckless. I'm gonna attack with all these. That's fine. And now we have the red card of a lifetime. Flesh was weak, but look at me now. Never lost a fair game. I do agree with you. Flesh is indeed weak. I do believe humanity's future is going to be some sort of transition from our flesh onto more resilient, efficient metallic bodies. I share your vision, Mr. Ballistic. I do. But you're gonna have to die today. Because reasons. Gotta go with the flow. We're gonna go with Zap 
We're gonna progress our level up with Twisted Fate even further. Our opponent uses up the. Oh man. Oh man. Does he have a way to. That's fine. I have a blocker for Fizz, so. Oh, there's your boy, the Leviathan. We're getting really close here. Keep up, keep up. What else did you discard? Another rummage. And he discarded a rummage earlier, right? Or was that that was a different game? There's the the worldly fish. Let's do this. I ain't afraid. Lucives are always a little bit scary, so I want to get them out of the board. You know, I'll I'll trade mine for his. Mine kind of replace themselves. There's in a way also did as well. I do want to set up the Dreadweight that can now. Um, hopefully my opponent does not have a way to deal with this fate because we are very, very, very close to leveling him up here. Alright, we bait that out. That's great. That's his attack. That's fantastic. <laughs> Let's get it. Drawing into Krusty Codger. Is it my birthday? Can you improve perfection? Join me if you want to live. Alright, no follow up play, unfortunately. Ballistic bots are getting pretty thick, but with this fate on the board, I feel ah, there she is. It is a Jag Taskmaster deck, which explains the turn one pull shark a little bit better, even though it's still risky. But it explains it well. I mean, I mean. Get that a tune and that extra card, and let's get to work, boys. Swain with leveled up Twisted Fate on the board. That is just all sorts of terrifying. Okay. Who has the serpent? Oh, we just enabled that. Who says I don't share? I will break it. We just gotta make sure that we can enable the. We can constantly enable that. Um, I think I'm gonna go for a Scorched Earth. I'm gonna go for a Scorched Earth here. This also sets up the Attune for next turn with Twisted Fate, which will allow me to get, you know, actual value out of that. I'm gonna force him to trade the, the Elusive onto me. As I. Attack with everything. So ordinary, prime and ready. Inferior design. All right. Still a lot of damage, and the moment your units take, like I know, Wiggly Burble Fish is 
Easy for me to kill. more of a twist of fate showing but I'll take it that was a fun game all right one more am I ready to jinx it send me your energy from the future and uh, we'll try this let's get that master's rank late like I am literally the latest to the party but at least I got there right that's what counts let's go well I haven't gotten there yet let's see what we did all right, it seems Fiora. Fiora, uh, Lulu? No, um, Zoe. <laughs> Forgot the name. Fiora Zoe. Uh, we actually lost this deck in the first video with my Twisted Face Swain deck, and it was like our only loss that day. So let's see if we can redeem that because I, I, I did definitely, I could have played things better. I'm gonna do a full mulligan actually. Even, even the Zap Spray Fins. Yeah. Cards like Blade's Edge are actually really important. They can, they can help us counter stuff like Guiding Touch, right? Uh, when we use stuff like Scorched Earth or even the likes of Ravenous Flock. I might not carry over my spell mana. I don't need to play Fortune Croaker immediately. Like, the body is nice, the damage is nice. At least we bait stand alone out of him. We take some damage, but that's all right. We're gonna use Twist of Fate to draw. I'm always up for a round or two. So and a tune as well. something really quickly there. I wonder what it was. All or nothing. I'm gonna attack with the Twist of Fate. Go for the Ravenous Flock now, before they can rebuild their mana and defend her. You know, kick him one her down. That's the Swain way. <laughs> the only way. And, um... I'm gonna go for the open attack. I'm not gonna get a huge hit off here anyways. Like, I, I, do, I do potentially miss out on some damage. But, I pass over initiative and I scout them out a little bit here. I right, just heal, okay. Well, we'll develop on the board in the meanwhile. I'm going to play you and we're going to drop the Fortune Croaker as well. I don't change fate, but I can see it. How close are we to leveling up Swain? Very close. We have the Leviathan here as well. They're obviously aware. And we, we get to play the Leviathan on the attack token, which is really important. Speak, stars. Speak I'd say! I think... It may be a little bit reckless to go for the salvage, but I'm gonna go for it. Go, what the hell? Yeah. I think 
they played yeah they played the the serpent that's basically all they have invoked at this point I can rip type Rex I feel like that's what I want to do good to go just clear these bodies if we constantly clear his board like even though it's nice to have the Leviathan here what the oh no 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 never not in a million years are you kidding me for one mana what can he do to survive this for one mana for one mana for one mana nothing unyielding spirit get out of here with that shit What do you have for one mana? Wait, wait, for one mana? What cards do they have at one mana? There's nothing that he that 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 prevents us. What is it? Oh my god. Oh my god, I forgot about that. I need Swain. I, I fucked up. I should have gone for the Noxian Fervor. I just didn't. I didn't think about. I just didn't think about that. I, I fucked up. I fucked up really bad. At least as long as the Leviathan sticks on the board. I fucked up really bad. I should have just gone for the Noxian for a war. It was it was it was safer than anything. Any goods here? Just me. I'm gonna play Jack the winner. I'm always gonna stay at five mana. I thought, oh my god, I, I was like really, really beating myself mentally. For, like, I was like silent for a moment. Oh, because I, if I lost that game because of, of that just, of that lack of judgment. Oh! We finally did it. We finally did it. Not the most deserved climb I've ever had to Masters uh, because of that last game. I should have, um, I just I just did not think of Chain Vest. I was really thinking for a while, but I, I forgot. And I've seen that card in that deck before. Like, it's not a, it's not like I was oblivious to it. It's just that I, I didn't remember it. And that would have been such an easy win if I just go for the safe Nox and Fervor. But no, I'm going to play the Death's Hand because it has two health and it just fits in so perfectly, you know? And I, I, I could have more utility from Nox and Fervor than online, but no. Don't, don't do don't do like me. Like if you're facing a deck and it's a meta deck, just look it up, you know, online and and you can have an idea what people are playing and play around cards. You know, it's a part. <laughs> but we did it, ladies and gentlemen. Better late than never. We uh we did it. So how how was our run here? Because uh, I can't showcase all the games. I cannot showcase all the games, unfortunately. One, two, three. 
All right, so we went seven and three. Seven and three. Which is uh, really neat. Uh, one of the losses was really tough with our draws. Another one, we actually choked. And uh, we have like a random early loss to team. <laughs> but the rest is just bomb, man. Like this deck is doing, this deck is great. Like arguably, arguably like one loss was to luck. And another, another loss was to just playing worse than our opponent. We, we faced a really good player and we, and we didn't play well. Well, at the end, it was very close, right? So ultimately, really, really like the deck. Uh, definitely more of a fault of mine and the RNG gods than it is the deck itself. Very happy with this list. Uh, as you guys can see, it's done amazing for me, and uh, it's the deck that I used to reach Masters rank with, even if it's a little bit late in the season. But you guys can try it out yourselves. Uh, this deck is not really being played much as of now because it isn't on tier list. <laughs> Uh, even though I think it's one of the best decks in the game right now. And uh, that's where I'll leave it at. Tomorrow onwards, now that we're in Masters, we can chill. And we can start playing all sorts of different things. So expect new decks incoming tomorrow onwards. Uh, I, I already have my... I already have a deck made that I'm excited to share with you guys. It's called A Suppressing Fairy Tale. I'm pretty sure you guys have seen it uh, prior. And like when I was, you know, hovering over this UI. But uh, really hyped for that, so... Yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Stay tuned for content. And I'll see you guys around.